This energy model looks kind of like a weird peacock kind of tail with all these colors fanning out like that. It's actually the uh, energy model of the connection of an exterior wall to an existing slab in a retrofit project in Montana. This is the detail as we received this from the architect. Um, and you can see it's an existing retrofit project. They have a double wall assembly on the outside with some exterior insulation and they were planning to bring the insulation down below grade by a couple of feet. And they were planning on not insulating the existing slab. So what you see there is the slab that is existing already in the house where they were planning on not adding any insulation. What we actually found in our research is that heat losses through the ground to the outside are some of the major causes of heat loss in American homes. And that is often overlooked by uh, professionals. These are the 50 projects that we um, analyzed in our report. And this is where we found the breakdown of the heat losses that I just mentioned. If you look at this chart, the number one cause of heat losses in homes is heat losses through the windows. We're going to see a lot more of that in following up videos. Second one is exterior walls. Third one is heat losses through the ground to the outside air. And only in the fourth place is actual air leakage, which is getting a lot of press these days on the internet. Let's take a look at the detail that we received from the architects before we start uh, proposing changes and see how things can be done better. Here we have the isotherm view of this junction. The, uh, peacock tail kind of image that we started off with this video with. As we start looking at the direction of the heat flow and its intensity, we see there's a lot of heat flow going out, not just from the slab edge, but also from the center of the slab, all the way down into the dirt to the outside air. I love this uh, view mode because it's really helping me to understand where the heat is escaping from. As I zoom closer, you see there's a lot of losses along the under the frame wall to the outside but also from the center of the uh, slab all the way to the outside air think of the dirt as a block of concrete that is how much dirt insulates as much as concrete pretty much so if you think of your house sitting on a block of concrete then you can understand how much that insulation of the slab does matter one may ask, what if we bring the exterior insulation down to the footer instead of insulating the slab? And this is what we have done here. You see, we have the exterior insulation below grade going all the way down to the underside of the footer. If we start looking at the actual direction of the heat flow, you see that things don't really change much. We still have a lot of heat flow from the slab down into the dirt to the outside air. And that extreme insulation down to the footer does help some, but it does not really fix the problem on the slab. A different approach from going to, down to the footer is to have what is called the skirt insulation. And that is very common one for retrofits where we extend some insulation horizontally out from the building uh, in order to insulate the ground better and extend that path from heat to escape. Once we switch back to the flow direction view, we see that the path for the heat to escape from the inside to the outside air does get a little bit longer with the skirt insulation. And this may be an option for some projects, especially if you cannot insulate the floor above, if it is a historic floor or whatever. Uh, but this may not get you to avoiding condensation at the slab edge um, or having a, a higher performance building. If we extend that skirt insulation further out, previously it was two feet, now it is four feet, we see that the path of the heat to get to the outside is even longer. And this is something that may be probably the, a more viable option compared to going all the way down to the footer or going over the slab with your insulation. What is important is to have a scientific approach to this. Uh, this analysis here shows better results than just having two feet exterior uh, skirt insulation, but it may still not enough depending on your climate and on your time uh, type of building. This is the solution we actually ended up recommending for that retrofit project up in Montana, where we have um, insulation over the entire slab and an additional finish on top of it. So the insulation that you can see here is that thin yellow line 
on top of the existing concrete. This will be polyiso, and then there will come an air barrier on top of it and some floor finish for the interior space. We see that the flow, that flow intensity overall is reduced because now we have thermal insulation over the entire existing slab, which prevents heat from getting into the dirt and then escaping to the outside air. Back to the original detail that we got from the architects, this is what the detail looked like. And once we get to the heat flow intensity, this is what we get with the original detail we got from the architect. And the heat flow intensity goes down significantly once we insulate the top of the slab, even just with one inch of polyiso, you see that intensity goes down quite a bit. This is the detail close up where we added the one inch insulation. It's the yellow line on top of the existing slab that you can see in this detail. Back to the flow direction view, you see that there's still heat escaping into the slab to the outside, but it is a lot less uh, compared to the uninsulated slab condition. So to summarize, the heat losses through the ground to the outside air are the third cause of heat loss in a new home, and they should not really be uh, overlooked in any project. So I hope that you enjoyed this video. Uh, please uh, follow us. We're going to have a lot more information about windows and thermal bridge modeling coming up next.